Seen a lot of change, been through a lot of pain. Some things are not the same as they were a year ago. In whose interests is it that Imran Khan fails? It's not over until the last ball. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Lord or Lady of Glencoe. Absolutely not. Hi everyone, it's that time of the week again where we're having a crisis, a midweek crisis. I'm told hundreds of thousands of activists from Imran Khan's ruling party and opposition groups turned out in force in Islamabad um, at the weekend ahead of the parliamentary vote seeking to topple the politician turned cricketer. Of course, I gave my views last week. My goodness, uh, the feedback was incredible. Uh, some of it positive and uh, don't want to talk about the negatives. Ooh. Anyway, if there's one thing that politicians really do understand, it's people power. So Khan turned to his supporters and urged them to travel right across Pakistan uh, to the capital um, at the weekend. And there was an impressive show of strength uh, from those who turned up at the parade ground near Faisabad interchange where people were dancing and singing to party anthems and shouting slogans such as long live Imran. Meanwhile, I'm told opposition supporters are also gathering and heading to Islamabad for planned anti-Khan protests in the week. These are supporters from the camp of former Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif's party, PMLN and they're calling it a long march. Oh dear, it's hardly original, is it? I mean, how many long marches has Pakistan seen over the years? I've lost count. Anyway, they'll be joined um, in their thousands from the conservative uh, Jamiat Ulema al Islam party, who are also taking part in the anti-government protests. They're accusing uh, the Khan government of corruption, blaming Khan for mismanaging the country, and the opposition will, I'm told, table a motion of no confidence on Monday. And after at least three days of debate, um, the vote must be held within seven days. So one way or another, it's all going to be over within a week. Imran Khan has been in tight corners before, both on and off the cricket pitch. And as any sportsman or woman will tell you, it's not over until the last ball has been bowled and hit. I hope he smacks it out of the grounds. But if you do live in Pakistan, I urge you to ask yourself this. In whose interests is it that Imran Khan fails? I'll tell you. America has been eyeing a number of Pakistani military bases along the Afghan border ever since the Taliban took control back in Afghanistan. The Americans would love nothing more than to install themselves along that border and Khan's response to this has been two words. No, not those two. He said, absolutely not. Absolutely not. There's no way we're going to Seriously? allow any basis, uh, any sort of action from Pakistani territory uh, into Afghanistan. Absolutely not. It's not that he is anti-American but he does not want his nation being used and abused by the US again. Look, General Pervez Musharraf earned the nickname of being America's poodle back in 2001. It's not a title Imran Khan wants and with good reason. So that's my rant on Pakistan for this week. Now then, 
still on the subject of politics, back in 2014, there was an incredible 85% voter turnout in Scotland for the independence referendum. Okay, the unionists delighted in telling us that they won, but those of us in the yes camp were still jumping for joy because from a point of zero, we took 45% of the votes. So that's not bad, is it? Ever since then, the unionists have been looking over their shoulders and some of them are already conceding that Scottish independence is just one referendum away. So when are we going to get Indie Ref 2? Well, the Scottish National Party or the SNP has been promising us a referendum soon. In fact, they've used the subject of independence to win the majority of seats in the last five national elections held in Scotland since 2014. Sadly, after each election, absolutely nothing has happened, despite significant mandates from the voters. I'm no longer buying the excuses put forward that, well, you know, we, we had to deal with Brexit, um, then we had the COVID pandemic, and now, of course, they're saying, oh, gosh, the prospect of war in Europe, these are uncertain times. None of this has stopped the Tories in Westminster from holding snap elections in December 2019, and now there's talk of British Prime Minister Boris Johnson organising another one soon. As Alipa Party leader Alex Salmond asked at the Spring Conference held last weekend, why should the Scottish Government stop the democratic imperative of a referendum or another electoral test on Scottish independence? It's a question the SNP Green Party-led government refuses to answer. Instead, as the May Council elections approach, I declare an interest, I'm standing as a candidate in the Scottish borders, the SNP is once again dangling the independence carrot. You know, the Italians have a proverb that says something like, well, I can't speak Italian, but in English it is, he that deceives me once, it's his fault. But if twice, it's my fault. In other words, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. So if you are a Scottish voter, how should you vote in the May elections? Well, it's easy if you want independence. Vote first for the Alipa party, and after that, give all your other preferences to the remaining independence parties. Hope you got that. So the Oscars are over for another year. I hope you enjoyed the Hollywood spectacle in your favorite films, actors and actresses uh, were chosen. I, for one, was not happy. No, not with the results, but with the so-called goodie bag jammed with expensive gifts, luxury holidays, sparkly gems and other freebies, which you get just for being nominated. That's, that's why all the stars turn up, I reckon, you know, for the goodie bags. Anyway, this time around, I'm told one of the gifts was um, contained a certificate for a plot of land in Scotland, giving the actor or actress the right to call themselves Lord or Lady of Glencoe. The fact we're talking around about one square foot of Scottish land is neither here or there. I'm not even sure of the deeds, um, if, if they're actually worth the paper they're written on. And I know that no one has the authority or power to bestow such an aristocratic title anyway. It's all fluff and no substance and has no place um, in Scotland. The thought of all these uh, Hollywood stars descending uh, on Scotland looking for their little square foot of land is rather amusing, but I don't know.
I don't like the idea of, uh, of it and I don't like such novelty. So that's, that's my damp squib. Um, and that's all folks, as they say in, uh, in, the, in the Hollywood films. That's it for now. And see you next week. Stay safe and stay blessed. <laughs>